All right, good morning, good morning, good morning. Man, today we're gonna do a little video about one of the worst WCW pay-per-views that I've ever seen in the history of my life. <laughs> and you old school wrestling fans, I, I think you'll I think you'll remember this one. So I am gonna hit triceps here in a minute, but I thought I'd make a quick video for you guys, kind of being the WCW guy where the big boys play. <laughs> so uh, let's see, let's go back to Tupelo, Mississippi in March of 1996. The name of the pay-per-view was Uncensored, WCW Uncensored. And at this time in March of 96, the Dungeon of Doom had their goal set on taking Hulk Hogan and Randy Savage out of the sport of professional wrestling. Dungeon of Doom and Hulk feuded all through 95. You had Kevin Sullivan, Kamala, the Zodiac, who turned out to be a spy for Hulk and went back to Hulk. And their their goal was with their father was to get Hulk and the Macho Man out of pro wrestling. And this is where WCW was at in mid-95 and into early 96. Now, the problem with the uncensored pay-per-view 1996, not that, you know, they had some luchador matches and stuff on the show. And Eddie Guerrero was there and he had a decent match. I mean, it was okay until you got to the main event in Tupelo that night, the Tupelo Coliseum, until you got to the main event. It was a, let's see, it's it's hard to describe this for you newer fans, but the, the main event was a triple, cow, or triple tower cage match where it was the Dungeon of Doom versus Hulk Hogan and Randy Savage. So it was like 20 on two. <laughs> and that was, and so you would have three levels of the cage. So Savage and Hogan would start at the, the bottom of the cage, they would fight two, and then they would have to run to the next level of the cage, fight two more, and then they would run to the next level of the cage and fight two more. And so then you're at the top, and I, I think it was like, I, I can't even remember all the contestants in this, but it was like one cage was Haku and the Barbarian, one cage was Flair and Anderson, one cage was, I don't even remember, and they brought in Zeus, and they brought in Z Gangster, he was Z Gangster, and they brought in, you know, some big, huge arm wrestling guy. I want to call him the the solution or something like that. But so the problem with this match, it was so unrealistic. It was 20 on two. And somehow Hogan and Savage wind up winning this match when it's 20 on two. I, I, I maybe more like, realistically, maybe it was like 10, 15 guys, but... There's no way as good as Hogan and Savage were that you could pull this off and make this look realistic. Another, another problem with this triple tower of doom match is they put it in the back of the arena and it was so poorly lit that you could barely see what was going on in the cage. It was, it was an ugly contraption. It was not lit. There was no way that the fans in the arena could have seen what was going on in the very back of the arena. They're fighting basically in darkness. If you look at the triple tower, it looks like it's about halfway done with burrs and all kinds of weird stuff, storage stuff sticking out everywhere. And it was just, it was, it was poorly done. And this was in March of 96. Thank goodness that they did the NWO in July of 96, because by this point, WCW was just lost. I get it that they were selling a gimmick to sell Uncensored Nights. I get it that they were selling the gimmick with the Triple Tower of Doom, but this was one pay-per-view that I was glad that I watched in Scramble Vision, and I did not um, order this one because this one was just an absolute train wreck. The presentation, the acting skills, all of it was just bad this one honestly belongs in the wrestle crap um hall of fame so my challenge to you today if you want to see some real real corny stuff super corny i mean i'm talking at this point they had uh a hogan getting hit in that hit in the eye with the high heeled shoes and wearing the patch and it was not it was not sharply done um at, at, at all I don't know what WCW was thinking at this time. I, I, I don't know. I personally, if you're going to ask me, 
would I think, would I rather watch Slambury 96 or would I rather watch Uncensored 96? I would much rather watch Slambury 96 because at least that looks somewhat realistic in the Battle Bowl tournament. This was the most unrealistic match I had ever seen in the history of my life. They did it once, thank goodness, because they really have no business doing this a second or third. I don't think it's ever been done since because it was so poorly done. And just be glad for the undercard on this because that was done in the ring where the fans could see it, not done in the back of the Tupelo Coliseum where it's half lit and you don't really know the rules of the match and you just see Savage and Hogan just running from cage to cage. And it got to the point when I thought the heels were going to start swinging at each other in the match because nobody know, nobody knew who was really fighting who. And they did a lot of fill time earlier in the pay-per-view with the Harlem Heat, Lex Luger, and Sting. They, they fill up most of the time in the ring because the, the steel cage match, the triple tower match was an abomination. It was, it might be the worst thing done in the history of pro wrestling with the exception of the the, what was it, 91 at Halloween Havoc, they did the Horror of Chambers match where Abdullah got electrocuted. That was pretty bad. Or whatever they did. I mean, I seen some bad stuff like, what was it, the AEW pay-per-view where they had the exploding barbed wire match and then nothing exploded. That was a mistake on AEW's part. But long before that, in March of 96, we had an abomination cage match. I don't really know how they could have saved this I guess thinking a little deeper they could have saved it by one a much better lighting and presentation on it and two man if they were going to square this thing up Hogan it probably should have been something like a five on five uh, maybe even a 10 on 10 but when you go two versus 15 and you have Hogan and Savage actually just win this match and all the heels jobbing out I mean you had I mean, think about it realistically. You had Haku, you had the Barbarian, you had Arn Anderson, you had Ric Flair, you had the Gangster, you had the, the, what was the guy, the Solution. And somehow you have Hogan and Savage uh, win this match. It, it just, it was so fake looking. And I hate using that word associated, but with pro wrestling is the word fake. But Uncensored 96 was about as fake as you could get and be thankful that WCW only did this once because that's all that he needed to do. I don't know. I mean, nothing on Tupelo, Mississippi. I don't necessarily know if that was the best venue for the pay-per-view. I mean, I'm sure the fans in Mississippi had a good time with the undercard matches, but you could hear the reaction in the, the main event when the fans can't see it. They can't see it with the burrs all over the cage, the sloppy presentation, Hogan the Savage running everywhere. You can see the fans just get quiet because they can't see what's going on. It's kind of like uh, people a while back got pissed and Bray Wyatt used to wrestle in the red light. You know, it's pretty much the same thing here except really, really shoddy looking. So um, I recommend going and watching WCW Uncensored 96, the Triple Tower match. If you really want to see something that is pretty interesting, go check this out. It's fake as hell. It's not even close to looking realistic at all. Anyways, you guys have a good one.